So you want to hear a story? Let me tell you a tale about a courageous elf woman. Now you know our world, of course, but for those who haven't ventured outside our city walls, allow me to enlighten you. Our world is one of wonder, magic, and mystery, with fantastic beasts like giants, dryads, and dragons, where humans, like you and I, coexist in the world alongside beings like elves, dwarves, goblins, and orcs. Now this tale I'm about to share may seem fantastical, but I assure you it all takes place in this world of ours. Alright, how are ya? Oh, hello. You're Agnetta, aren't you? Yeah, that's me. I'm here for a storytelling thing. Yes, that's what I was here for also. Oh, cool, cool. Um, what story were you telling? Well, yours, funnily enough. Oh yeah, go on, give us a read. Our hero, Agnetta, an elf with extraordinary powers, frizzy hair, ebony skin. Well, you do have a rather dark complexion. I might be, but there's so many more appropriate adjectives you could use. Chocolate, caramel, dusky, sepia. Hey, we'll go with sepia like the brown squid ink. Are uh, you finished with scribbling over my script? <laughs> nah, mate. You've got a lot of stuff wrong here. Allow me to make a suggestion. You can help me tell the story I'm about to share if you stop tearing up my script. Mm, yeah, good idea. So, where were you up to? I just read the introduction. So, you all heard that bit. Fantasy worlds, elves, dwarves, magic and dragons. You know where we are. Now, let's go into it. The Misadventures of Agnetta DeVoe Episode 1 Trouble with Trolls Right, so I'm Agnetta, an elf mage with sepia skin tone, a bit tall, fit, you know, and I live here in this great riverfront industrial city of Varadun. I moved here about two years before this story takes place, and the first person I met was my best friend, Termel. Now, he's a human, a bit pale since we're mentioning skin tones. You'd say ivory, wouldn't you? Please, can we move on from that? Termel, bit shorter than I am, long brown hair in a ponytail and side curl style, very fancy grey suit with a red velvet coat. When we met, he was a real estate agent, and he got me a place to stay at the Vestiment Silver Tavern in the heart of the city, where he'd come and visit me that morning. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning, Termel. I didn't expect to see you today. Now, this is Charlotte, the landlady, mid-twenties, olive skin tone, Dyes her hair bright red, redder than Termel's coat. Used to be a dancer, but had to give that up to look after the family tavern when her brother shot through. Something she's still a tad bitter about. Oh, I was always going to come in. Uh, I just had a meeting this morning, but that's all sorted now. Uh, surely Agnetta would have told you. I haven't seen her since lunchtime yesterday. She's been shut away in her room all night. And no, she didn't mention that. But you're here now. Can I get you something to eat? Uh, yes, please. Uh, apple pastry. Morning, Charlie. Please, stop calling me that. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I got you your newspaper you keep missing. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. I thought that paper was included in a bundle I dropped on your doorstep this morning. Nope. They're still refusing to deliver it to this part of the city. I mean, it's like an extra street over from your delivery area. Is it too hard just to do that every day? I see you're looking through the classified ads. Yeah, I just have to check and make sure my advert is still in there. Not only did this lot refuse to deliver the paper, they've been going back and forward on posting the ad, despite me paying them and everything. Well, that's not good. Certainly not. Oh, Charlie, just remembered. About that sign I wanted to... We can place something in the window. We can't go attaching the smaller sign to the bottom of the tavern sign, nor can we extend the sign. It'll be hanging too low then, and we don't need someone hitting their head on it. OK, I get you. But it's a shame that no one can see the sign as they come down the street. They have to be right outside and... Oh, you are kidding me. What is it? They cut my ad. Page 43, column 4, row 5. Edmondson shoe shine, not my advert that I paid him for in advance. The absolute bass. Oi, language. But they can't do that, especially not after you paid them for the advertising space. First they don't deliver my paper, then they flip flop on running the ad, then they don't post it. I won't put up with this. I'm paying him a visit now. Where's my coat? Termel, you coming? Why? What are you intending to do? Nothing incredibly violent. And yet, uh. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna crack any skulls. I'm just gonna have a nice, calm, adult conversation about this. Good. Then I'm going to throw the edit out the bloody window. 
See you later. Please don't throw anyone out of the window. And I'm including yourself in that request. Of course I ain't gonna do that. Neither to the editor or myself. But I will have words with him. An arse one's at that. I pay for that advert, so I'm gonna damn well see it published. How have the newspaper adverts been? Have you had any interest at all? Well, there have been a few calls to the tavern. But one guy saw I was an elf and immediately walked out the door. Really? That's dreadful. Eh. Charlotte tried making up for it by barring him, but whether he's been back to know he can't come back remains to be seen. What about the other callers? Someone took the pest control line a bit literally and wanted to pay me to spray their cellar for weevils. Of course I did it, and I made a small profit after I bought the weevil spray. There are a few letters responding to the adverts, but mostly seem to be mad ramblings. It may be a bit of a slow start, but it's a start nonetheless. People are contacting you. Some who place adverts in newspapers aren't even lucky enough for that. Uh, How much longer is it to the newspaper office? Just another street over, not too much longer. How have you been, Termal? Me? I've been good. Busy. I should be getting back to work by ten, so I won't be able to stick around to watch you shout at this editor for too long. It won't take long at all, I can assure you. Please, no violence. The violence shall be contained to my words. My fish shan't get involved. Back to you. How's life? Life is good. Very good. Um... And yet, there was something I wanted to ask... Oh, sorry, mate. Here's our stop. The office is on the second floor, this way up the stairs. Good morning. How may I help you? And yet, Ed DeVoe, I'm here to talk to the editor. Right. I'm afraid he's a bit busy at the moment. He's out in the meeting, but... Never mind. I can see he's in. I'll just let myself through. Excuse me. You can't do that. Who do you think you are? All right. How are you, then? Oh, no. Please get your foot out of my door. Please get your door off my foot. Agneta, I'm sorry, sir. She's a little miffed at your rather poor decision you made with your latest newspaper. I paid you weeks ago to run my advert every second day in the same column on the same page for the next two months. And you replace it with shoe shining. Look, it's a very complicated issue, all right? I was going to write you a letter this morning apologising for the inconvenience, but business just picked up here and I got swamped and haven't got around to it. Oh, you were writing me a letter, were you? Tell me, how exactly was this letter that you were going to write to me going to get to my place, when your own newspaper doesn't even get delivered to my place? Well, how many times do I have to say it's outside our area of delivery? Anyway, the reason your advert was dropped was because the shoe shiners came along at the last minute wanting to pay more for a priority spot, and with your advert being of a lower priority, it was just going to be a simple swap and compensated by a refund or free ad placement in future. And what about the next one? And the one after that? I'm pretty much losing potential business because of its exclusion today. It will return to normal in the next issue. You're lucky we're even posting your adverts. Am I? Why's that then? Because your advert is rubbish. It doesn't draw the eye. And you're foolish to think. If I might cut in before things get punchy, I believe you were required to notify Agneta of her advert's exclusion as soon as possible. Because of this, Agneta could potentially take you to court over this breach of contract for failing to do so. I'm going to put toenail clippings in all your drinks. Agneta. And I'm going to find where you live, sneak into your house, and swap all your food for aubergines. I think he gets the picture. This discussion of newspaper advertising politics certainly makes for riveting storytelling. Oh, you're not happy, are you? Okay, I'll skip forward to the good bit then. I threw the editor out the window and Termel and I went back to the vestiment for a quick cup of tea. Hang on, did you really throw the editor out of the window? No, no. No, too late. You said you weren't interested. We're moving on to the next scene. I'm back. That's taken care of. Charlotte, may I please have a pot of tea for Termel and I to share? Coming right up. There's also a customer here to see you. A farmer. He saw your advertisement in one of the other papers this morning. He's waiting for you in the private tea room out back. Oh, wow. Thank you. A a customer for me? This is it. This could be your moment. Your first real case. How do I look? You look fine. Let's not keep him waiting. Good morning. I'm Anyeda. This here is Termel. He's my personal assistant. Great to meet you. I'm Bert. What brings you in this morning? Well, I was reading the paper over breakfast this morning. When I heard this almighty bang outside in my field, I turned to my wife and she weren't to know what it were. And all the farmhands are out on the field over, so it shouldn't have been one of them. All right. So I pull out my boots and coat and head out to the yard to see what it is. And as banging keeps on happening, you see, can't make out what it is from the yard. The shed's in the way. So I have to leave the yard and head out to the field to get a good look at what's making this noise. Okay, yeah. So I head out to the field and then I see this great gilder brain there, banging on the side of me shed. 
and I've got nothing on me, so I'm standing there fearing it's going to jump at me and tear me to pieces. But it turns on its heel and runs out into the field and starts chasing my cows, swinging at them and trying to hit them. Goodness me. So, as I said, I'm standing there, nothing on me, tool wise, and all the farmhands are out there, are just good for herding cattle or plowing fields, not taking on some gear to brain. And then I remembered I saw your advert in paper, remembered it said pest control, and I thought it might be within your area of expertise. Well, Bert, I can confirm you came to the right person. That's I can see, dress for action. No Gilda Brain is going to be taking you down, that's for sure. It certainly won't be taking me down, this Gilda Brain. But if it were to take me down, what might it do? Uh, probably pummel into the ground. Gilda Brains tend to do that. Yes. But, like I said, if anyone's going to be taking a Gilda Brain down, it'll be someone like you. Uh, I agree. Uh, and yet her is an amazingly skilled pest controller. And uh, no pest is too small or large for her? No, certainly not. Um, where is your farm? Oh, Middleford Farm, Titan Lane, just north of the river. You should see the Gilda Brain as you come up the road if it's still there. Hopefully not run off to savage any more cattle. They're not common to here, but occasionally you get one that slinks down from the mountains and tries to start something with a horse. Yes, Gilda Brains often do that, I think. Uh, how about payment? Should I...? Uh, standard hourly charge is £20, but we'll see how we go when the Gilda Brain is dealt with. That old... Gilda Brain. Understood. Very reasonable price you have there. Anyway, I'd better head back. I'll see you there when you get there. Thank you. Goodbye. What is a Gilda Brain? I have absolutely no idea. Well, that was quick. Uh, Charlotte, do you happen to know what a Gilda Brain is? The name doesn't ring a bell. I'm actually in a spot of bother. Oh, what is it? The butcher hadn't made his delivery this morning. Turns out he's sick, but I don't have enough meat for the pies and pastries I need to have cooked tomorrow. I'm dead skinned and with the quantity I need, there's no way I can get all of it. Tomel and I need to head out for a little while, but when we're coming back, we'll stop by another butcher and see what we can pick up for you. Really? And Yetta, if you can manage that, you'd be a lifesaver. I need it by three at the latest, if you can get some. I'll find some way to pay you back. Glad to help, Charlie. All right, time to find out what a Gildebrian is. The name was a puzzle to us. We didn't even have a clue what it might be. So we headed upstairs to my room on the second floor, the living area a rectangular room with dark wood boarding and red filigree wallpaper. The walls lined with bookcases of different sizes and the shelves packed chock-a-block full of my extensive library I had quickly accumulated in the short time living here. Tomel and I pulled all the volumes and tomes off the shelf relating to animals, beasts, demons and spirits, both of us leafing through the indexes and G sections trying to find any sign of the word Gildebrain. Anything on your end? Nothing at all. Gildebrain, it sounds foreign. Could it be foreign? I thought it might be, but as to what language it originates from, I haven't a clue. Even if we did know, all of my books are in English. Right, um, well, it must be something big, right? Or at least people-sized, maybe? Um, unless it's a little vicious imp thing. Oh, yeah, true. Well, research has turned up nothing, so I better prepare for all eventualities. But what to take? Do, do I take a sword or a dagger? Maybe conventional weapons won't damage it. So should I take some of these stakes and try staking it to death? Your best bet may be the sword. Perhaps a stake for good measure. Uh, now that's close quarter combat sorted. Uh, what about ranged attacks? Have you got a bow? What? Because I'm an elf, I'm supposed to have a bow? You know I don't mean it like that. Now you mention it, I don't actually have a bow. Though I should probably get one. All ready to go? Yep, let's go. And so off we went on an adventure, a quest to slay a presumably fearsome beast and cement myself as the monster-slaying pest controller I had long aspired to be. How long had you aspired to be one of those? Only for about two months or so. We caught a carriage out of the city, through the suburbs and into the farmland, where roads went from cobblestones to dirt to faint paths worn away in the grass over time. Within 30 minutes, we were at the farm, surrounded for miles by fields of green grass and cows and rows of crops. The farmer stood waiting for us in front of his white, ivy-covered cottage, eager to help us to the field where the beast lurked. I uh, see so you made it here all right. Follow me. The Gilda Brain is just over here. Timel and I followed him nervously as we rounded the corner of the barn, bracing ourselves for whatever this thing might be. And when we saw it, we realised it was a bloody troll. Oh my gosh. Twelve feet tall with brown, mottled leather skin, a toad-like face with bulging eyes and a gaping, toothy mouth. Its muscular body hunched over as it walked on all fours using its knuckles for support. I had no idea how I was going to deal with this. I'm sure you have some idea how to deal with this. Yeah, yeah, of course, mate. Uh, troll killing is my speciality, along with fire magic and other pest control things. I've always wondered, but I've never asked. 
The name, Gildebrain. Is it a local term for troll? I think it's a word from old haddocks for this particular type of troll. Stands for cattle puncher. That's what it does see with those big fists it has. Comes down from the mountains and makes a right mess for us by beating up their livestock. So, does it keep punching just the cows or does it punch anything it comes across? Oh, I'm sure you'll be fine. Termal, uh, could I get a hand please? What is it? How am I going to deal with this? I don't know. I'm not a soldier. Shoot it with some fire and stab it through the throat. Lead it back to the mountains from whence it came. I'm all for the second option if you can get in and help me. Definitely option one. Look, it's not that I don't want to help. Just I can't help. I've got nothing to help with. And even if I did, I, well, I wouldn't want to. I'm a politician, not a warrior. Are you just going to stand there all day? Right, I'll just run at it, hit it, try not to get hit back. Failing that. Try not to get hit too much. Good luck. I walked towards the troll, ready to draw my sword as it dug its dustbin lid-sized hands into the grass, one of its bulbous eyes turning to look at me. Its body swelled and muscles flexed as I steadied myself before it leapt right at me. Shoot! 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 Still, the troll continued after me, gaining on me before I spun and lobbed the stake at its head, trying to spear it. Shoot! The beast made a stand trap after me as I turned and slashed it up its side, and stood back on its hind legs. As I slashed it again in the back, narrowly dodging one of its fists as it tried hitting me, it spun and punched the ground, barely missing me as dirt flew and it pounded the ground over and over. It stood, getting ready to punch once more as I leapt forward and stabbed it through its chest, losing my grip on my sword. Dead, the troll crumbled to the ground in a heap as I caught my breath. Ah, uh, see, I knew you had what it takes. Well, I'd have done a lot better had I known what I was dealing with beforehand. I'll go fetch your payment. Congratulations. Are you alright? Fantastic. You know, trolls are easy when you know what to do with them. I picked up the stake you threw. Uh, here you go. Have you fought trolls before? One, two, five maybe. I don't know. Well, now that's done, what are the other thing we needed to do? Uh, oh, the butchers uh, for Charlotte's pie meat. Yeah, that's it. Hand me my sword, would you? What are you doing? <laughs> this should save us a few pounds of meat. Really? <laughs> but it's skin. <laughs> With all those brown and orange splodges, it <laughs> looks poisonous. <clears throat> no, that's just camouflage. <laughs> Besides some differences in patterning or weird punching club arms, <laughs> trolls are all pretty much the same. <laughs> and the flesh from their legs makes for excellent cooking ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> and so, with the troll leg covered in salt and wrapped with brown paper and twine, Termel and I travelled home. The joy of my first victory and my first step towards the path that led me to where I am today flooded up within me. Charlotte was thrilled at my gift and she got all of her pies cooked on time, with enough meat left over to last the rest of the week. And how did she repay you? That is a story for another day. And this is the end of the story. The time I fought a troll and harassed a newspaper editor. The first of many times I did those things, to be completely truthful. But the only time I did both those things in the same morning. So how did that compare to what you had written in your script? Well, it hit a lot of the same points and achieved what you set out to do. Though it was nowhere near as poetic as mine was. I slayed a troll and fed the needy. How much more poetic can you get? I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Listen, I'll be back next time to tell the real story, not some waffle you conjured from nothing. Much like those magic powers you have, yes? How can you conjure flame from thin air and so many other things? You completely forgot to mention that anywhere in the story. No one knows you're a mage. I thought you were a storyteller. Surely you know only to include the information you need in a story. The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, written by Royce Pentagast. Starring Olivia Brzezinski as Agneta, Robbie Bleakley as the narrator and the editor, Marie Butler Cole as Charlotte, Jake T. Hodgetts as the farmer and the troll, Benjamin Rossiter as the receptionist, and Royce Pentagast as Termel. Theme music, the copyright of Matt Harris. Additional music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Produced by RabbitDog008 and Launceston's City Park Radio, 2017.